My name's Dan Field. My wife is Teresa. She's out here roaming around, and uh, this is our tiny house. Welcome. Coming in here through the front door, here's the front of our uh, V-Nose cargo trailer. It's seven foot tall, 16 foot long to the back of the V here, and uh, eight feet wide. And it gives us plenty of space. We've got a nice open kitchen. Uh, we've got a, a deep sink here and a 12 volt pump that runs a faucet. We carry a 16 gallons of water underneath down here. That water gets transferred from the water in our van. We carry 150 gallons all together, and we, the whole goal of living this lifestyle is to have plenty of water. I don't want to, I'm a retired plumber and water is everything to me. You draw things on paper, you put things on cardboard, trying to figure out where, where your, your floor plan is going to be. And for me, uh, my wife wanted lots of window space around her kitchen, and it seems to open up well, so we decided on putting the kitchen in the front. Everybody's got their own ideas, and what works good for them is wonderful. But this, for us, limited space with 16 feet. We've got a place for cabinets, lots of windows, and, uh, and storage down here. If I could find a better way it works for us, I'd do it. The main thing with building these cargos in mind is, number one, uh, nothing has to be permanent. You're building it yourself, so if something works for a year or doesn't work, you change it over and you put it somewhere else. Uh, everything is built simple in this home. It's not built in for life. It's uh, But as of two and a half years on the road, this has worked wonderful. Cabinets, uh, overhead cabinets, we put light storage in there, our dry goods. Uh, main thing is as you're abusing these houses, you don't want anything to fall off the wall. They are anchored to the steel framing and they are solid wood cabinets. There's some competitive stuff out there that's press board and will work for some people, but we wanted to go off-grid, back in the mountains, bad roads, and I felt these worked better for us. I was always concerned if I needed to put some posts underneath them or something, but they're doing well. They're anchored, anchored right to the studs, and it's got a good solid wood backing in them. Spice racks over here, this could, works well for my wife. These are just some small, tiny cabinets we had in our house years ago, and I thought, should I get rid of them? No, they work good for spices. Keep everything contained in there. We got little latches. These latches work good for Anytime you're moving down the road, very important to latch things up. Berkey water system, we, we treat our water with the Berkey filters. Again, we've got latch rings with just little uh, cords that snap and hold those in. The mugs actually stay up there. They're, they've got little latches and they don't bump anything. As we move down these crazy roads, everything pretty much stays in place. It's amazing. You just got a little lip here so the cans don't slide out. You just got some simple plywood with hooks up there for the metal utensils and more dry goods for storage over here. This home was partially uh, custom built through the builder uh, back in uh, Georgia. We spec'd out the windows and uh, I said they, they do it for a living, they can do it better than I can, a lot less time. There's certain things that are you weigh them out, you know, should I do this, should I do that, and I felt that's what they do for a living, so that's where we end up having them do all the windows here. And uh, they cut a hole in the roof and, and uh, different things, but uh, it worked out well. Due to limited space, you want to be able to put things back away. Uh, the stove, of course, it's an outdoor camping stove. We fold it up. It's on uh, uh, drawer slides here, and uh, it slides right back in flush. Comes in very convenient, so we have more storage over to the side. And uh, we also have a, a toaster oven with a rotisserie. We like rotisserie meats. and. Uh, toast things and bake things and also a microwave that runs off our generator when I need it. We have a, a limited battery supply. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of money but it, it keeps up with what we need here for lights and refrigerator and stuff. We're very happy with this setup. I, I don't see us changing anything. We're looking to, to put an inside shower. Going to be probably in this area. We'll probably slide the chair up and back. Uh, looking at a, a foldable uh, dog wash. 32 inches just uh, hard plastic with the drain going through and we'll tie that in and uh, I've got a, a shower valve back here so we'll drop a shower curtain down here and uh, be able to take a shower right from here.
been camping all our life. Uh, I came from the Adirondack, Adirondack Mountains, New York State, and uh, been camping since knee high. Kids growing up, everybody's been camping, having a good time. It was my vacation, turns into two week trips, typically around Florida and Georgia. As time went on, you, you're, you're living within your means, but the, the spread is getting farther and farther apart. It's obviously in any, any business, uh, the companies are pushing it harder, the money's going less farther. And uh, I eventually burned out. I knew I was gonna burn out. I've been praying for a change of life. Uh, Work-wise, I loved my job, but it was burning me out. An uh, older man doing a young man's job in service work. Uh, eventually I had a, a massive heart attack. That's what changed everything. Praise God, recovered from that. Uh, very good afterwards, but I couldn't do my work that I used to do. So page two, uh, what's next in our life? Where I'm recovering at my home, going, I've got too much land to take care of, too much house to take care of, another season in my life. And boom, I, I start finding YouTube and the RVers, living this lifestyle, nomad life, full-time RVing, sell your house and go. And, and I praise my Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave me the faith, the, the, no fear to do this living. Um, I'm My past life, I build something up, you stay there, you work hard and you don't move. This life is totally opposite. You never really know where you're going till you get there. It's just a wonderful life, nothing to hold you back. You turn the key and you go. We're over here to our living space now. Uh, this is our community chair. It's a swivel rocker recliner. Uh, I spend too much time in this. It's very comfortable. It's also my bed. Typical uh, uh, technicians that have back problems over the years. Uh, this has worked very well for me, uh, even back in the sticks and bricks. And uh, uh, over here is our refrigerator, 120 volt fridge. It's actually a freezer, deep freeze. We use it as a refrigerator. Um, the trick to this is we unplug it, uh, run it for half hour, 45 minutes, draws about 120 watts and uh, works well with our system. But I've got an indoor, outdoor uh, thermometer so I can look at the thermometer, check the temperature. And we tip, keep it typically 35, 40 degrees, works well. Uh, keep our meats down on the bottom. Over here, this is Mama's uh, bathroom over here. For all the people that are interested, how do you go? This is what works for us. That's just a handicap potty chair. It's uh, got a bucket underneath it. We take care of business as needed and uh, works well, uh, especially with people with uh, service industry. She's got a bad back too. So uh, it's got it raised up real high and she's very comfortable with that. And uh, it's nice not having waste tanks. I understand how to make a composting toilet and that's uh, probably the next thing on the list. The biggest concern we're looking at is where to put it. I haven't made that decision yet, but compost is the next step up and, and we're, we're very interested in that. Coming to the back of the house here, um, here's a, an old antique desk that's been in the family for years. Got to keep something from the old old family and that's it. It's worked well for us. We keep our business in there. Uh, one thing about this lifestyle is the, the more organized you can be, the, the easier it is on you. We got some bills in there and some paperwork and tax and tags and all that. And that works good. Over here are some, some cabinets I built, just three quarter inch plywood and some paneling doors. My main concern was space and if I open doors, are the dogs going to rip them off and whatnot? We have big dogs. So sliding doors works well. Keeps our medicines and our basic air, a lot of bathroom stuff in there. A lot of towels and uh, blankets in the bigger cabinets down here. They work real well for that. This started out to be just our clothes, his and hers, in this cabinet. It's a, it's a store-bought cabinet, a metal one. And uh, we uh, decided after a, a couple years of lots of wrinkles, not enough space, I went to these solid wood cabinets over here. Uh, just like the ones up in the kitchen, solid wood, front and back, anchored to the steel frame, very important. And uh, they're not heavy, they just my clothes in there. That's worked well. And uh, over here we've got a, a, a bed. My original bed ideas was to be able to flip it up and have wide open space. That was the whole goal of this house. Uh, it still will flip up, it's on hinges, but we decided to put this in for extra cabinets free. I can get it up three quarters of the way, get to my storage underneath it, that works well. 
got a lot of seasonal things in there and, and, and tools and whatnot, but uh, that's worked well for us too. Uh, when I had this custom design, I wanted the ramp door. It folds down. So uh, when the cabinet was up there, the TV used to be over there. Well, again, things change as you, as you build. Nothing's there forever. So the TV easily mounts on this back door. And if we're, uh, for example, we're at the north rim of the Grand Canyon, BLM camping, nobody around for 30 miles, uh, we flip the back door down and that was our, our view over the canyon. Wonderful time there. Anytime we get a special view, the back door goes down and there's a seven by eight foot, 56 square feet of, of uh, porch. Uh, when you have 200 pound dogs, it's, it's like having another room. And you, you lay in bed and you watch the sunrise or the sunset. It really is nice. This light interfered with my wife a lot of times, so I disconnected it. I'm gonna put a toggle switch here just to turn this on and off as needed. And over here is the fantastic fan. These things are fantastic. They come with a thermostat if you want. They have all different options. This one is, is a three speed, reversible. And it's nice uh, when this air gets stagnant or she's cooking to turn on high. It's 12 volt, takes very little power. And we crack a window or a door and it sucks everything right out. Humidity and smoke and uh, works well. I highly recommend it for anybody living this lifestyle. For insulation in these, uh, there's, I'm going to say there's never enough, just like your, your sticks and bricks. They come standard, I think it's one inch insulation. It's a one inch steel frame wall. So there's one inch uh, foam insulation in it. And it, it, it does as good as any other RV in whatever season you're in. The whole idea of nomad life is if it starts getting too hot, you go up in elevation. That's, that's our goal, to be able to have the transportation to get us up to higher elevation. If it's uh, the seasons change, for instance, we're in Laramie, Wyoming, and we knew it was going to snow in a week or two, and it did, four inches or so. We weren't concerned, but we knew the season was changing, and uh, so we started mapping down our course to head south, get warmer again, and uh, just a matter of a few hundred miles, and, and uh, worked out well. We we like more windows. Windows are uh, important to see out. I, th I think the more the merrier. Uh, don't worry about the heat, don't worry about the cold. It's, it's good for the soul to see outside and you don't have this cooped up feeling. I had beautiful land in North Florida, rolling hills, rivers, trees, and that, that was a great for that season of my life. Uh, due to answered prayers for my Savior, Jesus Christ, He changed the life that I wanted to get out of. I will tell anybody, be careful what you pray for. You might get it. <laughs> this is kind of humorous. It's not the way I wanted it, but it's worked out well. Now I get to do this full time. So here we are, almost three years later, seeing His creation, seeing Him, him paint the sunrise every morning and the sunset. Uh, the mountains, the desert, there's so much beauty out here. You'll never see it driving down the interstate. You'll never see it in an airplane. Uh, you've got to sit and as they say, smell the roses. The important part of this lifestyle isn't moving all the time. It's just standing still and looking what he created. In the, in the springtime, the, the flowers in the desert will come out here. They only get three inches of rain a year or less, but these things still flower. Uh, the cactus flower, the weeds flower, everything is a new creation, a new season. To look at the mountains right now, if you video, uh, if you come back in an hour and look at them, they're a different mountain. They're all, they're all constantly al alive with the sun changes it. It's all his creation. You know, he, all these things we take for granted, he put out here for our, our recreation and, and even our livelihood. The lifestyle itself will slow people down and make them think whether it's a creation or, or whatever they think. It, it slows their mind down and, and makes them realize where they are at the moment. It's not always about the work. It's not always about the banking account. It's not always about the mortgage. It's about breathing right now. And we're back in the back side of the van here. This is the back of the mule, we call it. And uh, we've got a, a hot water system, propane, and uh, we just mount our shower head up here and fire it up. The igniter runs off a battery. 
uh, just a uh, D cell battery. Makes it very simple. You don't have to run power to it. Propane going to it. Water coming from our, our water system here. I've got a, a simple 12 volt pump wired into this little box here. I've got three tanks. I can carry 150 gallons, 50 gallons each. Water is just like gasoline in a vehicle. I mean, the harder you push it, the quicker it goes away. Uh, we, we've been out two weeks, no problem, without water being in sight anywhere. Um, showers, you limit your showers, you limit your wastage. Uh, we all use a minimum amount, of, and I can't tell you the gallons. I've never figured it out. But a lot of motorhomes only have 100 gallons or less. And, and uh, we've been blessed with this system. It's worked very well for us. Uh, again, water is very important. You learn to conserve. We've got a curtain. We've got some clamps here. We just use these little mini clamps, clamps on our doors. And uh, we, we just put a, it's a, a five by seven tarp, not a big investment. And uh, I've, I've actually recycled some uh, pa packing material. That's our shower floor. And that floor keeps your feet good. We, we use uh, uh, water shoes a lot of times. Uh, that helps a lot. But the rocks are hard on your feet, so we use words just insulation. And uh, people have all different ideas. That works for us. Being a, This is basically a garage, so I've got jumper cables. Again, you, you need to know how to take care of yourself out here. There's nobody to call a lot of times. If I can tell anybody any one golden rule when you're doing this RVing is have a tire pressure gauge. Very, it's the most important tool you can have. You've got to be aired up when you get in these extreme conditions. When it's 80 degrees, your tires are on fire as you're driving on the road. If they're 10 pounds low, you, you'll be sitting on the side of the road. Very important tool. Another thing with temperatures, this is an infrared temperature gauge. Uh, being that I'm towing, uh, I want to check the temperature of my wheel bearings, check the temperature of my brakes. Just the wheel, just in generally, and we'll just go give it a shot. Every time I stop to get gas, I stop to, to check the, the wheels. Uh, uh, these things are notorious for having problems, these RVs with wheel bearings and tires. And if you just check the temperature, uh, it'll save you a lot of, a lot of problems down the road. Uh, going up to the solar panels, I carry 400 watts of solar. On a decent day, I'm getting you know, typically 370 watts, and I tip them towards the sun. Uh, the whole idea for me is to put the panels on the van, and when we're in a shaded area, I can park the, the RV in the shade, put the, pan, put the panels out in the sun. That's, that way I can stay cooler longer. They power a battery that's inside. It's a portable battery. I can move it from here to inside the home as needed. And I, I power my home with this cord here. It's a heavy duty cord. It goes over to my pigtail. It comes off the camper. When we want to travel, I can leave it plugged in, just tied up with some zip ties to keep my refrigerator going. Or, uh, or I disconnect it and just wrap it up in here. This was a 12 passenger van and there's frame rails going down side by side for the original seats. And uh, I've got everything anchored to those frame rails. In theory, it's gonna stay there. One of the other tools I certainly push for everybody is a portable air compressor that runs off a battery from the Ryobi system. When you're on the road and you come out and there's a flat tire, you got a choice. Do you change the tire or just pump it up and go somewhere? And most of the time you can just pump it up go down to the tire store and get it fixed right there. And for blowing out air filters, and it is dusty out here, nice to have air available. I also have a leaf blower in there, and that's how we blow out our house sometimes. Get into this dust, you can sweep and mop and brush all you want, but these, these uh, leaf blowers work real well. Okay, uh, here's the inside of the van from the barn doors, and this is a Blue Eddy system, uh, EB240 it's called. It's lithium, and it's basically, uh, I believe, 1.6 100 amp batteries. So for people who have a battery bank, it's basically one and a half batteries. Uh, it does wonderful for us. We've never been had a lack of power. Uh, on the cloudy days, we will use our, our uh, backup generator if needed, but I try to use this all if possible. It charges our, our drill batteries and our air compressor batteries and runs all the power inside. It will run our air conditioner. We've got a 500 watt air conditioner. It'll run it for a few hours. Um, Typically, if we need the AC, we're moving. It's not, that's how that works. Uh, it comes with a 12-volt plug, plugs for your phones and things. And we have our own little laundromat in here. Here's our washer and spinner. It's basically about an eight-gallon system to wash. You can wash basically anything you want. It does our jeans, it does our shirts and underwear. You can put anywhere, typically five, seven gallons in it. 
and uh, it'll wash agitate better than any washer I've ever had and then you drop them over into the spin cycle after you rinse them one, one another rinse drop them in the spin cycle and that spinner will dry t-shirts I'm gonna say 90% dry hang them out here in the desert sun for 15 minutes by the time you've finished your your next wash cycle the ones on the dryer are dry it's just amazing the, how simple it is out here and we carry tools with us of course we, you know being a retired service plumber I had thousands of pounds of tools uh, just a few things on the back wall and the, a couple tool bags here is really all I need almost three years later we're doing well back to the patio um, entryway nice for any RV to have a good uh, entry handle mounted uh, to the frame very important wife goes in I don't want any issues with her falling in any direction and I put the shelf up there mainly to if she got something in her hands she puts it on the shelf and then she opens the door and she can grab it from inside so uh, you know as we get up in age we don't need to fall slip or twist or anything so safety is very important out here uh, panning over to the blue jugs these are uh, reverse osmosis water this is our drinking water we shower with the water in the van but we stick with this drinking water it's widely available grocery stores Walmart you name it that works well we always keep at least 10 gallons with us all times and going over here this box this is my my smoker it's a little tabletop smoker I can smoke three four fat racks of ribs uh, I don't know 10 pounds of chicken uh, works well for us uh, runs on very little power because it's pellets it, it draws about a hundred I think about a hundred watts to fire up the smoke in the burner the flame then it settles down and just a blower it's a matter of like five watts so for a solar system a small one it works great it also uh, has a plate you can take out and you can grill with it if you want to grill a steak or something like that so it's multi-purpose which is important for a lot of things out of here to have more than one purpose uh, works well for even smoking biscuits you get the ready-made biscuits you throw them on there and it gives them a wonderful flavor of course you gotta have recliner got one inside got one outside we like recliners the, the screen tent uh, shade tent it's it's uh, when you're in the desert you're, you've got to get out of the Sun uh, then there's wind out here I decided to put my camper facing south so the front door wouldn't be in the in the wind because we get a lot of wind from the north downfall is you're in the sun so we we put up this shade tent and it's uh relatively inexpensive and simple and breaks down easy and and very portable and lightweight another thing we use i don't know if you can see it or not is a is a portable fire pit over here gas propane fired works nice for the cold nights get we'll get together a few people campfires are nice out here for for gatherings out here in the BLM land you don't burn the wood you you leave it for all the critters just like it is for the backup the, the propane works wonderful uh, the whole goal again is to be outside uh, just just different air different scenery is so much better for your soul uh, when you're stuck inside uh, for some people me I'm good but for some people it, the walls close in uh, your attitudes change and and being out in this lifestyle is what we're here for going for walks whether it be you know 100 yards or 50 miles it's it's up to you coming from North Florida I had beautiful acreage but as the as my house walls started closing in I didn't even use my land anymore uh, out here God gave me a, a new place to to adventure and every time you go out you see something different we also have the electric bikes and uh, we get on them we'll go for two three hours for a ride the time goes so fast you're like oh it's five o'clock oh the sun's going down you just lose track of time you lose track of days and for me I'm losing track of weeks and months and uh, it's a good thing praise God Life for some people isn't going well, whether it be financial, whether it be landlord, you name it. The devil in us tends to say you can't do it, and that's that word that I don't use. You can do it. What do you have to lose, especially if you're struggling now? There's so many people, especially the younger generation, 
has this technology available to make a living out here. Um, I'm a retired tradesman. I could move to city to city to find a job if I needed to. But for, for people that have this technology, a lot of them can carry their jobs with them. And, and God makes bad things good. This COVID situation that everybody has talked about and is getting sick of talking about, he's made a lot of people go on a road because they can't go back to their offices anymore for whatever reason. And technology gave them that choice to be able to go, oh, I can go on the road. I can go four states away. I can go, I can go out of the country. There's, there's no limits with this technology. Like anything new, you know, you've got some shakes and, and shivers. Einstein said, if you keep doing things over and over again and expect a different uh, outcome, that's insanity. You've got to make a change. What, what was working at one time doesn't work anymore. You've got to be able to make that change and, and go bold.